The driver is a massive part of the common Rider experience, and sometimes they're even cool enough to want to bring them home. Whether you bring home a Legend series, a pre-owned DX that came with some really cool extras, or a brand new CSM, you want to be fulfilled by your purchase. And sometimes a specific belt catches your eye, a flashy screen, a dope character, and most importantly, a sick piece of plastic that can totally go on your waist. In a lot of cases, that's an LED driver. Beginning with Revice and so far having ended with Kochard, Reiwa has given up a phenomenal belt with at least one recolor that has a flashy screen and sometimes even voice lines every Rider series. But which one should I get? I can hear you tell your YouTube viewing device. Well, don't worry. I've bought all of them so that you don't have to. So let's take a look at which one is the best for your money. First, let's establish some rules to help us provide value to these products, aka our scale. I personally will be grading these belts on visuals, the gimmick cost to entry, and the average price of the belt between three popular stores, Toe Collectibles, Nin Nin Game, and Amazon Japan. We've got six belts to go through, so let's start with the one that we can probably all agree deserves to be number six of six. Right off the bat, we are unfortunately met with Bandai's classic cheese gold, which is disappointing because in the mainline toys, the gold is getting better, but P Bandai still seems to be falling behind. And it's interesting because the part of the door that is painted is a really nice deep gold. The red and the purple aren't the worst I've ever seen, and they just can't save the belt from the curse of the cheese touch that Bandai seems to have. Already we are scraping the bottom of the barrel for visuals. As far as the price goes, it's about an average of $111 because I straight up could not find it on Amazon Japan. This is definitely the lowest of the bunch, but it really does deserve to be there with the shoddy quality of the way it looks and the lack of transformation sounds. And finally, the cost to entry for Kemi cards is abundantly the best in the lineup. However, it cannot save this belt from being the absolute worst. It only has two transformations, both of which are incredibly inconsistent and not the same as each other at all, and it's almost a little aggravating with how different they are. Out of the box, it's only two, and unless you're just a really big completionist fan, I really can't recommend this belt to you. It's at the bottom of the list. If you want it, get it. I don't say get it. I'm happy with it because I'm a big sucker for gold and I thought Garion was cool, but outside of that, there's no real reason to have it. While the Eldora driver was incredibly disappointing, the next belt and the rest forward really don't have a fully bad experience, especially as the next belt is Geats's OG, the Vision Driver. Out of the box, you have three transformation sounds, Glare, Gazer, and Glare 2, and three incredibly groovy standbys. Already putting out a good buy, especially at its average price from all three stores at about $147. While I am satisfied with the belt, it simply isn't the best for the money you're putting up, as much as it pains me to say. But hey, you get three gorgeous transformations, an uh, incredibly gorgeous belt, and unique LED animations for all of the raised buckles, which does kind of lead into my last point, which is the cost to entry for raised buckles. The DX route and the SG route are a little different, but for the, about the same amount of money, surprisingly, you can get yourself either two vice, two raised buckles or seven raised buckles, and sometimes even a glitter variant. I really do feel like there's value in raised buckles, but not enough to keep the vision driver any higher than it is, especially because despite the custom animations, the custom sounds really come in later down the line. If you were already an avid collector of raised buckles, I would say that you can definitely get some serious value out of it. It's worth mentioning that while I don't have it, there is a memorial release that is right around the corner, and while it does have a high spec belt, which is better for bigger folks and a more adults viewing experience, that's only really for people who super duper enjoy the belt anyway, or really like the characters that came with it and wanted the extra bonus of voice lines. So obviously it would rank higher than Vision, but since it's the same belt for a different audience, I'm gonna leave it out of this video. If you'd like to purchase it, I would recommend it. The Vision Driver is, like I said, a great experience top down. With number five out of the way, it is only up from here, despite the fact that we are taking a deep drop down. It was difficult putting this belt, this belt as low as it is, but I think it's just missing some key features and values. That doesn't mean it's bad by any means because the Demon Shriver is a fucking kick-ass belt, coming in at an average price of about $172. Okay, hold on. Okay, so when I was looking at Amazon Japan, most of the prices were ridiculous and reselling, so this one is definitely inflated, and while I would not buy it at $172, buying it like the $120 you'll find it at like Nin Nin Game, or buying it off Baiyi, or even the $145 you'll find it at Toe Collectibles, is definitely worth it. 
The Demon's Driver is the first belt of this trend and it is absolutely marvelous. From the soft and stretching, um, uh, veins? T tendons. Muscles! Muscles running along the belt to the LED screen with some fairly complex animations is a pretty remarkable toy. The biggest drawback is, of course, the gimmick's cost to entry. Vice stamps are usually sold in singles and are wildly expensive compared to 9 cami cards or anywhere from like 2 to 7 raised buckles for the same amount of money. Plus, unlike chemi cards and raised buckles, you can't use the SG variants as effectively, therefore I cannot raise the Demon Driver any higher than 4th place, especially because even if you want the most screen accurate transformation sounds, you have to buy the Memorial Spider Vice Stamp! The biggest bonus of this belt is of course the Ghetto Mix feature, giving you really cool animations and finishers for literally every Vice Stamp. Using a transformation device as a Busso system is something I definitely enjoy, even if the belt isn't the best for your money, especially from Amazon Japan. Demons is the goat, but this belt is no hero me. We are now in our top three LED drivers, and this is where it gets really difficult to assess and differentiate value. But let's lift the veil and take a look at what's probably some people's number one LED driver. The Deathstream and Veil Driver combo is absolutely fucking nuts, but we'll start with Veil. The Veil Driver is our recolor for the Demon Driver from Revice, and while its color scheme is mostly just inverted, I have to be honest, I think it's really nice. The bolts and bulging bronze parts really lend to it being a belt that was built for the sole purpose of containing Seto Kaiba. I mean, someone's inner demon. The sounds are pretty standard, being that of a transformation and a couple finishers, which are all very good at distinguishing themselves from the Demon's Driver, but outside of getting a whole second set of rider sounds, the voice lines really give immense value to the belt. Specifically, if you're a fan of Veil's voice acting, especially because he shares a voice actor with, like I mentioned before, Seto Kaiba, I really do think that the voice lines give an extra oomph to this belt and keeps it up really high on this list. However, it couldn't be much higher because of the cost to entry for Vice Stamps. With all that in mind, it definitely is one of the best ones for your money, especially how with just a couple of clicks and the flip of a power switch, you have a whole new driver! While the Deathstream driver is lacking in voice lines, you do get all of the features of the Demon's driver, including Genomix, repackaged into what I believe is a better and more appealing uh, belt. Really, the Deathstream driver and Veil driver combo is probably a lot of people's number one for a lot of reasons, after all you do essentially get two separate belts, a whole bunch of voice lines from a popular VA and stuff, and I really do think it is a fantastic belt and something I'm very happy to have in my collection. If you already have some vice stamps, I think it will add worlds of value to it, giving as you have two new ways to use them, and even if you don't, I still think that the belt by itself, giving you two vice stamps off the bat, is definitely something that's worth it to invest in if you liked Revice, if you liked Veil, vale, if you liked Genta, you probably liked one of those things, so honestly, a phenomenal belt at a pretty good price point, I would pick it up. Now let's zoom out a little and go audience side for Geats' recolor, the Zillion Driver. First things first, the Zillion Driver's buckle reader does suffer from a smidgen of the Bondi cheese gold, the best of their cheese to be fair, but the belt itself is this beautiful champagne gold. Plus the mirror effect on the eye within is definitely nice and really helps separate it from the full LED feel of the Vision Driver. Now let's talk price. At an average about $117, this belt is absolutely a steal. You get not one, not two, but three henchins right out of the box because they don't rely on uh, race buckles to make the transformation sounds themselves. And one of them is a stage show. That's right, Gazer Zero off rip is in this belt, which is an incredible bonus and a nice little touch. It really feels like you're getting a whole typhoon. Unlike the Vision Driver, where you have to do the admittedly unshow accurate method of pressing the button multiple times, you use the method of holding a button and turning the power switch on and off, which is much better than the inconsistent transformations of the Eldora Driver and the multiple presses of the Vision Driver. And did I mention, as a absolute little bit of, of icing on your incredible value cake, you get voice lines. That's right, that button that activated the rise buckle is also now a voice line button. You get voice lines from Sewell and Jit. Not Gazer Zero, because he was again a stage show form that later became a uh, uh, spin-off form, so there's no voice lines for him. But you do get voice lines from one of the hardest characters in Geats, which is Jit, and he was not fucking around. 
being totally honest, it is incredibly close between the Zillion driver and the final driver. They are incredibly interchangeable. They are both stellar values. And I think it really just comes down to which suits you like more or even which show you like more because really this last belt, this is a good one. Well, this is it. We're at the final belt. And if you've been keeping up, you probably know exactly what it is. And you're probably wondering how did it best Zillion? Well, it's just value. Gotchard's Dread Driver is coming in at the best driver for the money. Like I said, I want to be totally clear that it and Zillion are incredibly close, but this thing is just so damn nice. It has the tactical feedback of physical buttons, multifunctionality, custom animations for every chemical card, and unique sounds animations for every legend card. The Dread Driver is just an absolute wonder. I love the archaic and evil, evil look it has. Like it was chiseled, like it was chiseled out of it. Intensely and aggressively evil piece of the Toby Quarry. The low cost of Kemi cards, the unique animation, sounds, and three finishers per henshin really is a fantastic value, especially coming in at only $136 on average. Oh, did I mention? You get four transformations out of the box Dread Type 0, 1, 2, and 3. It really does feel like you get a lot out of it. Again, especially because accessing the several incredible sounds is so cheap compared to the other options. Regardless of how you feel about Gotchard, Geats, Revice, I think it's important to look at the Dread Driver as a staple in getting the most for your money. Again, four transformations, custom animations, custom sounds, especially for the legend forms, that really comes in handy to feel like you're really, you're really channeling Inui Takumi when you hear that beep, 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 when you slide your Vice Kemi card. Well, holy shit, that's all the belts. That's all of the LED belts that we have been so graciously given in the era of Reiwa. Yeah, Dread won, but it's worth mentioning that Zillion was incredibly close. Definitely feels like more of a premium purchase. Well, what did you think? Were you on the fence about an LED driver and now you suddenly feel like it's the time to buy? If you have an LED driver you're fond of, feel free to tag me on Twitter or X as some people call it. I'd love to see it. Or if you disagree with me, feel free to tell me why. But that's that. Uh, I'm Callie, and remember, shine on.